Um, I'm now all delighted to hand over to Phoebe, who's going to lead us through the uh, Sunshine Garland workshop. Uh, so over to you, Phoebe. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Phoebe English. I live and work in um, South East London, and I am a fashion designer. Um, I've been a fashion designer for about 12 years now, um, and my work focuses mainly on handmade textiles and intricate woven surfaces. Um, so the workshop I've developed for you today um, kind of plays on that idea of intricate textiles, but we'll be working with paper and paint and dyes and stains um, instead of fabric, which I would traditionally be working with. So I will make a start and show you what we are planning to try and make today. Um, so we are working on the Sunshine Garland, which is here. I've put it up on my plant so you can see it. And I'll just get it down so you can see it a bit more detailed. You can see it in a little, a little bit more detail. So today we'll be working on a small part of it, or you can continue it to make it as long or as short as you like. Um, and I guess the idea behind it um, is to remember the summer, the summer light and the summer sunshine as it's getting a bit more wintry these days. Okay, so I'll just put that back behind me. So you can um, use whatever type of paper you would like um, to make these garlands. Um, but for this workshop, I've been working with scrap paper. Within the studio, we work with as many different um, recycling um, processes as we can. So I wanted to build that into, into the workshop. Um, so we don't throw anything away at all in the studio. We try and reuse all of our paper. We try and reuse all of our fabrics. Um, so if you have some um, old bits of paper that have been printed on and that you can use the other side of, that would be great. Um, obviously, if you've got brand new paper, you can use that as well. So what we're going to start by doing today is drawing a template. Um, we have different options, so you can draw the template with me, or you are also able to print a template as well. Um, so that's what the downloadable template looks like. Um, we're going to draw it to start with, so we can see, see the process for that. So for that, you'll need the paper, um, a pencil, and a ruler. I'm using a Pattern Master because this is what we use in a fashion studio, but you can use a normal ruler as well. Um, and after that, you will need um, some other equipment, such as paints, um, crayons, um, felt pens, or even if you have the time, um, some natural dye. This is made from a um, hibiscus tea um, if you want to go down the super eco-friendly route just depending on what you can get hold of today so let's begin oh you'll also if you're using the paint you'll need some brushes as well so to start the template if you take one of your scrap pieces of A4 paper and the way I usually start it is I just fold it in half like this. And just put a nice crease down the middle. Open it back up again. And that gives us our two sides of the template. Next, we're going to just mark along the bottom side. Um, little mark at two centimeters there and another one at two centimeters here. We can then draw those lines up this across the page 
Then on this side of the paper, we're going to just mark one centimeter with a little dot and one centimeter with a little dot. And then taking our ruler and to draw these together. So you have a one centimeter line. We're going to repeat that on the other side. So again, one centimeter and one centimeter. And then join them up. We're going to then draw these two, these one centimeter lines either side of the central fold. So using that folded line, almost like an edge, on the top of it, we'll do one centimeter dot and a one centimeter dot. And I'll draw a line, linking them together. And then we'll turn the page around and then above that fold, we'll do another one centimeter line, one centimeter line, and then draw it together. So we should have a template that looks like this so far. What we're gonna do now is draw in the ladders up these two sides. So I think they're roughly about a centimeter and a half each. Let's just check. Yeah. Okay. So taking the left edge, we're going to go from this corner here and go up this side of the page, marking. 1.5 centimeter dots all the way up. So 1.5 little mark, 1.5 little mark, 1.5 little mark. And you just continue this up. Hopefully you can see this okay on your screen. 1.5, 1.5. Um, Phoebe, we just had a question just to have a kind of uh, recap of all the dimensions we've gone through. So yeah. the outer grid, was that two centimetres at either end and one centimetre on the sides? So this, this gap here yeah. at the bottom is two centimetres. And then this edge is one centimetre, one centimetre. And then on the other side of the fold, you repeat it one centimeter. And yep. on this edge, one centimeter. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's great. Okay. And, and then what we're going to do now is fill in these two sections here with ladders that are 1.5 all the way down. And then we're going to draw them across the page. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you for that. I can go a bit slower for everyone if. If no, I think helpful. that place is okay, but yeah, uh, as we said at the beginning, if anyone does have any queries, you're welcome to uh, come back to us. Yes. Um, yeah. Let us know. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on just marking 1.5 centimetres along this side. All the way up, 1.5, 1.5. And then I'm going to stop at the top where there's about a two centimeter gap. So I'm now going to move on to do this side. So turning it around. So we have this two centimeter one on our left. And I'm just going to mark again. Um, and Phoebe, we've also just had another question from Thomas. Yeah. Um, just uh, you can carry on with that. Just uh, saying if they do already have the template, what should they do? Oh yes, apologies. Yes, if you've um, if you've printed the template, what you can do is prepare your colours. So if you're using paint, maybe you want to use a lilac 
or you want to use a, a green, you know, so if you're mixing a lilac using a purple and a white, or um, if you're going to work with the green, if you're doing mixing blue and yellow. So, um, yeah, kind of developing the colours that you would like to use or choosing the right pens or pencils that you'd like to use. Um, and then we'll do that in the next stage. Um, I've used for my garland, I've just used yellows, different yellows, because um, I wanted to capture the sunlight. Um, but you could, you know, if you wanted to do a rainbow, you know, different colours for different sunshines or all greens or all blues or something or multicolours. <laughs> um, there's no rules, so feel free to, to go wild with the colour, the colour selection. Um, yeah, I feel like the, the light is changing a lot at the moment, so remembering the summer light is really something that I like to do around this time of year. <laughs> okay, so I've marked uh, 1.5 up this side and 1.5 up this side, and now what I'm going to do is join them together. So turning that around, so we have our two centimetre gap at the bottom, we're just going to travel up. So using your ruler, you can connect those dots up from this side. So like this. I'll do the first two and then I'll show you what it's starting to look like. So you can see we're starting to build this ladder in. And these are going to make our sunshine rays, if that makes sense. So let me just can I bring it a bit closer? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Hope everyone can see that. So we're going to just carry that up all the way to the top to make these ladders. And then we'll start painting. So what I quite like about the textiles that we make here at the studio, so often the way that they're made um, uses a repetitive method. And I quite like to do tasks that have um, a repetitive element to them. So for example, this, this um, workshop involves um, drawing the same shape again and again, or it involves um, sticking the same or cutting the same shape again and again and repeating things. So I quite like that I, that's, that um, process of repetition. I find it relaxes me um, and it allows me just to switch off for a few moments just to focus on doing the same thing. Okay, and I've just got to the top now. Okay. So I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, There's that's two pretty... ladders now. Is that, is that clear? Yeah, that's very clear, yes. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is separate them. So you can do this either with um, paper scissors or you can use um, a ruler and we can tear it. So because we folded it down the middle, you can just fold it again. Oh, actually, you know what? We're not gonna do this yet. We're gonna do, we're gonna do the painting. I've skipped, I've skipped a session. <laughs> okay. So we've got our template, and now we're going to do our designs. So I'll show you some examples of different things we can do. When I've been working with uh, the yellows, the sunshine colours, 
this is kind of the shapes that I've been painting on to the to the scrap paper. Um, so you can see I've used quite bold lines um, using quite a thick brush like this. And this works quite well for when you cut your sunshine up and you can see the shapes and you get quite an expressive line across the piece. Alternatively, if you don't have paint or ink or natural dyes, you can also use a crayon. So with the crayons, you can see it works quite well. I've used a blue here um, just to keep to that uh, summer sky <laughs> theme of the blue and yellow. Um, and this is using a thick crayon and this was done trying to fill as much of the page as possible. And you can see that works quite well because you see a lot. So I think if you've got a thin coloring pencil or a thin pen, we're trying to fill the page. If you have a thick pen or a thick paint, it's quite nice to leave, leave some gaps um, and you get more of an expressive line. So there's two ways we can, can go with this. Um, so let's get our paints ready. I'm gonna use, um, I'll do some paint and I'll also do some crayon so you can see both versions. So I've just got um, a palette here or alternatively you can just use a plate or just, um, I don't know, a plastic lid or something. Um, I'm gonna try with some watercolors. So here's some blue. I'm just gonna put a little bit out. And I've got two different yellows here, um, a lemon yellow and a medium yellow. just to kind of celebrate the different tones of the summer light. The medium yellow is a lot more, is a lot deeper. Okay. So I'll try and get it onto the screen so you can see the palette and the, and the template at the same time. So I'll do a little bit of both. This is using the printed template and this will be using our drawn pen template. So we can see both, both options depending on what we're doing. So I'm just going to get a bit of water on my brush. Just Just moistening our brush. So, then kind of keeping a bit of water on the brush because we want the paint to be not too thick because we'd like we need it to dry in time for us to be able to use it in, in the session. Um, and then I just sort of dab it onto the paint just to make it quite not too runny, but a kind of an inky consistency rather than a pasty consistency. Because what we like, what we want with this is a nice fluid line. Okay, so loading up our brush, brush with paint. And then what I've been doing with the painting is just doing really bold, expressive lines. Um, like so, I'm gonna put a little bit more water. So you can see the paint's quite loose. Okay, so we don't want to fill the whole page because <clears throat> we want it to be able to dry in time to be used. So don't try and not leave too much paint on the surface. And if you can leave that somewhere that can and dry, can waft it around a little bit, or even um, peg it up somewhere to dry for a few moments. But yeah, I'll show you 
on the screen. <laughs> That's on the screen. Right over the top of the um over the top of the drawn template. So I leave that to dry up here for a minute. And then this is using the printed template, which is the same idea. Maybe what we'll do is we'll go for a blue with this one. Um, you know, feel free to, to mix your own colors. You know, if you wanted to mix a lilac or a pink, um, it doesn't have to go down the sunshine route. If you're not in a sunshine mood today, you might want to use another color. So um, I'm gonna go with the blue. So again, loosening it up with some water just by dabbing it on. I kind of, it's sort of like a squashing um, technique, if I can use the word technique. And then adding a bit more water to make it a bit looser. Okay. And again, we're going to fill the page with as many expressive lines as we can. A bit more water here. So, trying to keep some gaps. And then just making sure there's not too much paint left on the surface. You can kind of dry the brush off a bit on the plate or the um, or the dish, whatever you're using to mix your paint on. So just keeping it so there's not too many puddles of paint. So it's another one. Let's see. Again, give it a little waft. Very technical. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put that up to dry as well. I think it becomes a nice part of the process where it's yeah, of... the wafting is <laughs> very key part of the process. So if you're not using paints today, I'm also gonna do just some drawn versions as well. <clears throat> um so let me just grab. These are some of the other printed templates. So, for example, if you've got crayons, a couple of different crayons here. And with the crayons, because the, the ends of them are much finer than the thick brush, um, I like to try and fill the page as much as I can. So I think what I'll do here is I'll just choose all of the sunshine colors. So we've got orange with marigold orange, a darker orange, kind of buttercup yellow, and then some lemon yellows as well. And then what I might do is just um, try and fill in the page as much as I can. Again, it's that nice repetitive I'm going to try and go through stripes of different ones, different colours. A little bit darker. Just while you're colouring that page in, Phoebe, we've had a really nice comment from Vicky. Um, so she's joining from Wetterfield in Northampton. Was it Wheatfield? I don't know if I pronounced it right. Um, and they said they're really getting into it now. They're using the paints. So oh, great. So yeah, the more um, the more templates that you fill in, the longer the garland becomes. So you know, you could do. I have one here that's really long this is a test one I did and you can see it goes on and on it's like Mary Poppins bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's quite fun and that's also this one is not using any paints or crayons or anything this is just using the scrap paper from our from our scrap paper box and it's quite fun just to put it up in your working space or in your 
in your sleeping space or eating space or wherever you are. Um, it's just quite fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. You could also alternatively do a Christmas version. You could translate it into a Christmas version as well. Um, so red, reds and greens or more of a winter, winter one. This is broken. <laughs> There we go. This is another sunshine crayon. One so you can see several different sunshines. I mean, you could go all over the page. I've just chosen to do it in a um, in a stripe, but you could do go all over. So that's of crayons. Um, and then alternatively, if you haven't got crayons on you and you're using something like um, felt tips, again, that would get quite the different feel. Um, I've got some quite good felt tips here, which are these sort of brush, brush tip ones, but then I've also got some, some old ones that are just normal as well. And with, the thing with felt tips is you never know how good they're gonna be because <laughs> Sometimes they get a bit old and tired. So I tend to use them in groups like this because then you're sort of guaranteed to have at least some color that comes out of them depending how old they are. So yeah, we'll do a felt tip one as well. So I'm just gonna try and fill the page with as much with as much uh, ink that's left in the felt tip as I can get. And then I'll just go over with the other end. So then I think they're all going to overlap each other. I really love those repetitive things. Just more of an orange. Again, you can see this one's quite worn out. This isn't actually very good at all. So I'm going to skip to another one. This one. Ah, okay. So felt tip version. You can see they've all got quite different feels. Um, alternatively, you could just use colored paper and then you would skip this, <laughs> this up section, but I quite like to do the painting part of it. So obviously these ones, you don't need to wait till they'll dry. I've lost the one I've just done. There we go. So the, the crayon and the, um, felt tip versions you can just start making the next stage um, but if you're if you've prepared painted pieces and that that's kind of quite dryish now but I might leave it a little bit longer now the next stage is we can prepare the strips which are how we put put the sunshines together so you can kind of see here They've actually got this inner strip inside them, which holds them together. And then eventually we join them together to make the garland with smaller strips here. So if you haven't been able to print out the template, which looks like this. Oops, sorry, let me go to that. Camera went my way. <laughs> um, we can draw that just quickly. It's quite easy to draw. And then we can start cutting everything out or tearing everything up, depending on what you're using today. Um, lots of 
equipment everywhere. So again, I have to make the, the, the strips that join the garland together. You can print the template or we can just draw some from an A4 piece of paper. So if you're drawing with me, just get our ruler. And what we want for these inside panels are two centimeter strips. So if you're doing a garland like this, just with one page, you'll need one strip per piece. So that would need two strips. If you're gonna do four garlands, uh, four sunshines, then we'll need four strips. So I'm gonna draw four today. So going along the shortest edge of the paper, put it in the paint. <laughs> um, I'm just going to mark, so we're trying to get this long length here. I'm just going to mark two centimeter. Mark, two centimeter mark, two centimeter mark, two centimeter marks. And that um, is because I'm going to do four sunshines in my garland. If you're just going to do two, then you just need to draw two, depending on how long or how short you'd like to make it today. And then I'm going to turn the paper all the way around. And I'm just going to match up those line dots to the bottom. So using this far edge, I'm going to do two centimeter mark, two centimeter mark, two centimeter mark, two centimeter mark. So we've got one, two, three, four. Again, you can do less or more depending on how long or short you'd like to make your garland. And then I'm going to take the ruler and just join them up. And Phoebe, if you're making a bit of a shorter garland today because you don't have as much time, could you add to it later and make it make it longer? Oh, yeah, you can. And join Absolutely, and that's that's the, the really fun thing about the garlands is you can just keep them going forever and ever. So you could have a garment that went all the way zigzagging across the ceiling, or you could work with a group of friends and all make short ones and then you could join them up. So it's really dependent on what you would like to do, whether you'd like to do short ones or long ones. And you can come back to them another day and make them longer or change the color. And they could then travel from one color to another color like a rainbow. There's lots of different options. Nice. So you could just make two today just to have mm. in your space and then you could make some more another week to make it longer because you can just join them onto each other. Um, so going back to the strips, I've just drawn the, those two marks together. I'm going to draw some more. Can and as you draw those, uh, Phoebe, just to let you know, you, we've got about 10 more minutes of the session. Oh, <laughs> the time has flown. Okay, let's go a bit. Let, I'm going to speed up. I think I was, <laughs> I spent too much time with my colouring. Sorry, everyone. Okay. Okay. So, okay, we're going to just cut these strips or tear them, depending on what you're using today. So, uh, like so. Oops. We've also had a really nice message, Phoebe, from uh, Martin, uh, that's Avocet Ward. So hello to Avocet Ward. Hello. Uh, they're actually using turmeric uh, to mix their colours. So they're Great. lovely smell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is some of the, the dye that I made. This is making just, I made just using um, hibiscus tea, but you could also use turmeric as well. Um, and yeah, we, we used paint today because I wasn't sure how many, how many of you would all be able to pre-prepare the turmeric. So, and that's great that you've all done that. Um, we do actually have a workshop coming up later in this, um, this term run by Molly Bonnell, where she will be making uh, dyes and paints. Great. So it's like a good Once preparation. Like, yeah. <laughs> could have done hers first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we could have prepared the dye and then gone into the sunshines. Okay, so we've got our strips. Let's go back to our painted. If you're using the painted ones, they should be dry by now or dryish. 
Um, and what we're going to do is cut down the middle. So we're going to cut separate it into two. You can also tear this because it's obviously been um, folded. So we've now got our two ladders like this. And we're going to start by taking our ladder um, to the side like this, so landscape. And we're just going to fold it in half, like so, matching up the edges. So we can do that on both of our sunshines. Folding as well. And then what we're going to do is just fold these one centimeter flaps at the edge. So kind of following the line, kind of fold it like this. And then turning it over, we're going to repeat that. should give us a nice, you can kind of see the sun is standing up and then we'll do it on the other one. You can see like this. So folding the one centimeter edge up. And then turning it over. Folding up the other side. So, do you like this? Oh. And then we're going to take our two strips that we prepared earlier. Sorry. Right. <laughs> A bit slow. <laughs> okay, and we're going to take our fruit stick or our glue, um, and we're gonna just flap that down like this, flap that down like this, so then we can see the two one centimeter things, uh, flaps sticking, facing upwards. And then we just take our glue and run that all the way along. There. Yeah. All the way along that one. So those two are glued and ready. Then we take our strips and we match them up on top and press them down nice and hard, like so. And then you do the same on the other one. And then all the way to the end like that. We should be able to flap it back to how it was before, but now it's secured with the strip underneath. So you've got this sort of T shape. Can you see that in the camera? Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. So we've got one and we've got two. And now either by tearing or by using paper scissors, we need to separate all the ladder lines. So if you're tearing, we're just finding the top edge and you're just ripping down the line all the way down to the edge, glued edge. So if you're cutting, you can snip it like this and you go all the way down to the edge so that it bends like this. So I'm just going to cut all the way down. And then what we get is a nice 
fringe looks a little bit like hair. Sorry, what you're hearing in the background is the studio team. All the way to the end. I'm just making sure that you don't cut this bottom bit here. So that stays in place. You cut all of the ladder and then that means it should bend like that into a cycle. And then you have a sunshine. In order to secure it, we can just remove one of the two centimetre flats at the end. I'm just taking a bit of the glue. Putting a nice big bit of glue on. Taking the end of our strip and looping it around and gluing it. I hope that is clear enough from the video. And if you press it nice and hard down, that will make sure it's nice and secure. So yeah, here is the sunshine. And you repeat that however many times you would like. You know, you can do a crayon one. You could do it a smaller size with a different yellow. Um, and to join them together, Phoebe, did you have, you had yeah. a kind of strip of just a single yeah. thing with no... Yeah, so we can do the next, and the next and final stage, hopefully we've got time, is to join them together. So again, you take one of your strips, like so, from what you've drawn or what you've downloaded, and all you do, you can do it with two, is you just loop them together. So putting the paper through both middles of the sunshines and then looping it back on itself. If we just put a nice big bit of red stick or glue and then press down really hard. So that joins them together. Oh, amazing. So, and then we just repeat. So if you want to make it longer, again, loop it through. And this is that idea of, of repetitive, you know, it's a repetitive task and that's something I really like myself. <laughs> again, press it together. And now we can begin to see the garland coming to life. <laughs> so you can interpret it in lots of different ways. If you want to hang it somewhere, what I really recommend is to put a loop at the end. So you can sellotape that to a wall or you can hook it onto the, the top of a curtain or the top of a window or something or a handle. And that just gives you the chance to hang it, um, to decorate wherever it is you'd like to decorate. Um, and you can also paint the, or color or use some ink to color the, um, the linking circles as well. Um, and you would do that. I, well, I was doing it in the same way as I was doing coloring the sunshine. So just with big expressive marks. So yeah. It would look like that and then you would fill it in um, but for, for efficiency I've gone for white ones today but you could use you could use a coloured paper for those as well and really go wild with the with the design. Um, Phoebe just before we finish up I just have one more question um, can you if you could recap how to join the suns together after you curved it round? Of course I will do let's go so, oh here we go so if we've cut all this, 
how many minutes do we have for like a brief piece uh, we've actually minutes? sort of come right to the end but that's okay, okay. everyone's still I'll with just, us so if you do I'll have just to see this is a, a super speedy demonstration so you cross <laughs> the ends of this like so making sure we don't cut the this bit at the bottom so and you can also tear these i'm just using scissors um for speed but you can tear them and you can also make them wider if you wanted them wider than these one centimeter sort of tassels so you can see you've got this nice curving sunshine now you can see and these two bits at the bottom are a bit wider so what you can do is you just cut one of those off or tear one of those off like that and show you in here can you see yeah. in that camera change back to that one yeah so you can remove that like that so you've got a little empty bit there and then you take your glue put your glue on the bottom like that and then you just take the other end and you just link link it back around and press it down into that gap and then you just press it really hard with your fingers and then that should make sunshine or a flower or whatever color you've done it might not look like a sunshine um if you've done a green one or a purple one it might look like a flower or or a sea urchin <laughs> <laughs> so you can see they're different on on both sides because we folded them so you could also factor that into your painting or your coloring just doing different colors on different amazing well, yeah and then you so just join it together Sorry, Phoebe. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go back to your just showing it up on the screen there. It's brilliant. Um, so, yeah, Vicky says thank you very much for that. And we've also had a thank you from Ward 2. So, thanks for joining us, Ward 2. Um, and thank you, Phoebe, for today's session. That's been really great. I hope everyone's enjoyed it at home. And thanks for, for all your, your comments and questions. They're really helpful to run the session. Um, just as we finish, I'm going to launch uh, the poll just to see how you found today's session. Um, and Richard's just shared with us the um, today's uh, presentation. Uh, so I've launched the poll, sorry, got a lot to do. Launching the poll now. Um, and as that polls on, we're just gonna tell you a little bit more about hospital rooms for those of you who are joining us for the first time. Um, we're a London-based mental health charity that transforms NHS mental health hospitals with extraordinary art. Um, the digital art school is a huge, hugely important uh, part of what we do, uh, making creative activities available to many more people and to help to build a community of, uh, of people. Um, you can find the library of all the past projects we've done and the previous digital art school sessions on hospital-rooms.com. You'll be able to find the recording of this session there as well if you want to watch this session back. Um, and do have a look at our YouTube channel because they're all by YouTube too, so you can access them from YouTube if that's easier for you. Uh, we've got a digital art school newsletter, which will keep you informed about the upcoming workshops and what's what's coming up soon and the materials you'll need for them so you can prepare uh, and any downloads you might need. And again, they're all available at our website, uh, hospital-rooms.com. Um, and we'd also really like to see what you guys have made today. So any uh, of the garlands you've made today, whether it's on your own or as a group, um, or if you want to carry on making them and send us pictures later, you can upload them in our digital art school gallery, uh, again, on the hospital rooms website at hospital-rooms.com and just navigate to the gallery section. Um, and there's a big button there where you can upload. Um, and yeah, it's always great to see what you've been doing. Um, so next week on November the 10th, we've got Liz Elton, uh, he's an amazing artist who's going to be talking about how you can use your uh, kitchen waste to make compost prints. Uh, so that's going to be really exciting of making more beautiful things out of uh, organic matter and, and existing things. So thanks again for joining everyone. Um, I'm going to end the poll. And uh, that's the end of today's session. Thanks very much, Phoebe. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.